it is open enrollment and you are faced with options concerning health insurance plans you are not sure of which plan to take the cheap one or the slightly expensive one to make it worse you are unsure of the network to choose the hmo network or the ppo network if you feel stranded and cannot seem to make a decision you are at the right place your questions will be answered in this video stay tuned Hi teasers, my name is Linda, your money teaser. Here, I give money teasers on personal finances so that you and I can arouse our dreams. Today, I will talk about health insurance. I will explain the process of choosing the right health insurance plan for you and your family. And by the end of this video, you will know exactly what to look for before choosing a health insurance plan. But first, if you are new here, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification so that you won't miss out on any video I publish. And when you subscribe, please type in the comment below, I subscribe, so that I will get to know you and thank you personally. Let's get started. In order to guide you in choosing the right insurance plan for you and your family, there are five questions you should ask yourself. The where, the what, the how, the which, and the why. Once you can confidently answer these five questions, you will be ready for open enrollment. Let's start with the first question, the where. The where question consists of identifying your marketplace. In other words, where are you shopping for your health insurance plan? For example, if you are an employee, the company you work for could be your marketplace. This is actually the route used by most people, especially by full-time employees that work for companies offering health insurance benefits. Choosing a health insurance plan through your company might turn out to be your cheaper option because most companies subsidize their employees' insurance premiums, hence lower premiums. However, if you are self-employed or if your job doesn't offer health insurance, you might want to look into a different marketplace, your state's public marketplace, for instance. Your state's public marketplace or the federal government could be a great option to shop for private health insurance plans. Depending on where you live, you can either use your state's public marketplace or you can use the federal exchange to shop for health insurance. Simply go to www.healthcare.gov and enter your zip code to be transferred to your state exchange if there is one. If not, then you will use the federal marketplace. Keep in mind that open enrollment usually runs from November until mid-December for the federal exchange and usually till a later date if you live in a state that runs its own marketplace. Also, you can get health insurance through a private exchange or directly from an insurance company. One advice I have for you is to go through a health insurance agent to get your insurance because the agent will not just assist you through the whole process, but the agent can guide you in choosing the right plan for you based on your health needs. Agents usually do this at no extra cost to you. Getting a private health insurance plan could be very costly to a lot of people. If you have a tight budget, keep in mind there are other alternatives. MediShare, for example, is a much affordable alternative to health insurance available to Christians. Please check the description box below for more information about MediShare. Now that you have identified your marketplace, let's move to the next question, the what. The what question consists of looking into what you and your family have as medical needs and what the insurance plan can offer you as coverage. For this purpose, it is important you take a close look at each insurance plan benefit guide for a summary of benefits. Make sure to put your medical needs under the microscope while comparing different health insurance plans. 
Though you cannot fully predict your future medical needs, refer to the type and amount of treatment you've received in the past as a guide to help you decide. For example, how often do you see your primary care physician or a specialist? Do you do frequent visits to the emergency room? Have you been diagnosed with a chronic disease like high blood pressure, diabetes, or cancer? Do you take the generic or the more expensive brand name medication on a regular basis? Moreover, you could also think of possible medical care you or your family will receive in the near future. For example, are you planning on having a major procedure the following year? Are you planning on having a baby or are you expecting one? Do you have children? What kind of care might they need? Take a look into all your current and future medical need and see which insurance plan covers them. And if they are covered, what are the terms and cost of the medical services associated with your medical need? This leads us to the next question, the how. The how question consists of looking at how the insurance plans will cover your medical needs. In order to understand this step, it is very important you understand some health insurance terms. For example, you need to understand the deductible, the co-insurance, the co-pay, the out-of-pocket maximum, and how all of these terms affect your premium. If you do not understand these terms, I highly suggest you click on the link above to watch my video on health insurance terms you should know. I will also link it below in the description box. Once you're done with that video, please come back to this video to learn how to compare different insurance plans. The how step consists of comparing insurance plan by looking into how they will cover your medical needs and how much you would pay for them. Check to make sure the plan you are considering not only fits your budget, but that it also covers your medical needs. Healthy people, for example, may prefer to keep their premiums payment low by choosing a high deductible health plan with an HSA account. Whereas other people with health conditions may prefer higher premium payments with a low deductible so that their insurance can kick in as soon as possible in the form of co-insurance to help them pay for their medical bills. While choosing your plan, avoid the mistake of focusing so much on your premium to the point of forgetting to consider other costs. It is very important you also know how much you will spend out of pocket in a year. This takes into account the plan's deductible and the co-payment plus the co-insurance. Here is an example of two plans offered by an employer the high deductible health plan and the low deductible health plan. Start by looking into the annual deductibles of the plans presented to you. You can see in this example that whether you're taking insurance for yourself as an individual or for the entire family, you will pay about twice on annual deductible if you choose a high deductible health plan compared to someone who chooses a low deductible health plan. Hence, if you were to be charged a total of $3,000 in a year on medical services as an individual, you will pay $3,000 out of pocket with a high deductible plan, whereas someone in a low deductible plan would pay less because his or her co-insurance will kick in immediately after he or she spends $1,300 out of pocket. Also, take a look into the out of pocket maximum of both plans. You can also realize that with a high deductible plan, you will pay a higher amount of money out of pocket in a year on medical bills compared to someone who chooses a low deductible health plan. Keep in mind, you might reach your yearly out of pocket maximum quickly with a high deductible plan due to the fact that you have a higher annual deductible. The take home message here is high deductible health plans come with lower premiums whereas low deductible health plans come with higher premiums. Therefore, if you have a medical condition and you make frequent trips to see a healthcare professional, you might want to consider a low deductible health plan 
That way, you will get to meet your deductible faster so that your insurance plan can start assisting you with your medical bills. This might also help you manage costs better by allowing you to spread your cost over time in the form of a low co-insurance payment rather than paying a substantial amount of money upfront as part of your deductible. If you choose a high deductible plan and you make frequent visit to the doctor, you will have to spend more money upfront to meet your deductible because the insurance plan can kick in to assist you. On the other hand, if you are a healthy person, you might want to consider a high deductible plan because you don't need medical care except for emergencies and preventive care, which usually are covered by the insurance plan at 100%. A high deductible plan won't be an issue because you are not seeing medical health providers to be paying medical bills anyways. Keep in mind, you shouldn't just focus on deductibles and out-of-pocket maximum. Also, take a look into the co-pays and co-insurances. They could be another factor that could sway you into a different health plan. Here are examples of some services covered by both the high deductible plan and the low deductible plan and their respective co-insurance and co-payments. Please keep in mind these are examples and plan will vary depending on your employer and or the marketplace you are shopping in. As you can see, with these particular plans, after the deductible is met, the insurance plan will pay 70% of physician services under the high deductible plan and 65% under the low deductible plan. Moreover, you can see that preventive services are covered at 100% by the insurance regardless of the type of insurance plans you have. This is because preventive services are the best way to keep you healthy. You do screenings for early detection of a disease which is more manageable than a full-blown disease. Hence, saving you and the insurance company money that could have been put toward expensive treatments. Please, always get your mammogram, colonoscopy, PSA test, vaccines, and all the likes done. Most of them are covered by your insurance and are free of charge to you. For hospital services, you can see that under the high deductible plan, the insurance plan will pay 70% of your medical bill except for the emergency room services that the plan will cover your care at 90%. However, under the low deductible plan, you can see that there are some co-pays that apply. For example, the plan will cover 65% of your inpatient services after you pay a $175 copay at the time of your appointment. You can also see here that unlike the high deductible plan that covers your urgent care services at 70%, the low deductible plan, on the other hand, will cover all your urgent care services after you pay a $35 copay. The same principle applies with the emergency room services and the mental health and substance abuse services. Keep in mind that you are responsible of the portion of the bill that is not covered by the insurance company because as a co-insurance, you share your bill with the insurance plan once your deductible is met. Also, I want to note here that lower co-insurance and no copay with a high deductible insurance plan compared to the low deductible insurance plan could be a reason for someone with health conditions to choose the high deductible plan over the low deductible plan. For you to be able to do this, you should be ready to pay your deductible upfront so that you can benefit from a lower co-insurance. Moreover, if you have a health savings account, also known as an HSA, that comes with high deductible plans, you could use it to pay for your deductible. Some employers actually incentivize their employees with free money when they sign up for such a plan. In this particular case, the employer will give a minimum of $600 up to a maximum of $1,200 to the insured depending on the people covered under the given high deductible plan. Though high deductible health plans involve a higher annual deductible and a higher out-of-pocket maximum, they can also save the insured some money. 
This will be the case of a healthy person that will pay less in premium and have the ability of opening a health savings account. Contributing into a health savings account could be a great way of savings or investing money as your contributions could be invested in stocks or mutual funds. Moreover, contributing into an HSA can help lower your adjusted gross income, hence your tax bracket. On the other hand, a low deductible health plan will be ideal for people that are involved in activities with high risk of injuries, like some sports. It will also be ideal for those that are pregnant or planning on getting pregnant. Those with critical or chronic diseases that see healthcare professionals frequently, those that are planning a major medical procedure like surgery, those that are taking several prescription medications or expensive drugs, and those with children with any of the conditions I just listed. Whatever the plan you choose, make sure to be on top of your premium as you will run the risk of losing your coverage should you fail to pay your premiums. Speaking of premiums, you should definitely take into consideration the cost of your health plan when signing up for it. So far, I've covered how the insurance plan covers you. Now, let's talk about how your health plan choices affect how much you will pay in terms of premiums. Generally, the higher your annual deductible, the lower your premium and vice versa. Likewise, the higher your yearly out-of-pocket maximum, the lower the premium and vice versa. Let's get back to the examples of the health plans I've been showing you so far. As you can see, if you were a full-time employee in this company, you will pay $56 per paycheck on a high deductible health plan compared to $100 per paycheck on a low deductible health plan. If both you and your spouse are on the plan, you will pay $106 per paycheck on the high deductible plan compared to $198 per paycheck on a low deductible plan. And if you are insuring your entire family, which consists of you, your spouse, and your children, you will pay $164 per paycheck on a high deductible plan compared to $312 per paycheck on a low deductible plan. Keep in mind, your premiums will be higher in both plans if you are a part-time employee seeking health insurance through your employer. Also, these numbers could run even higher if you were to consider private health insurance. For this reason, I suggest that as an employee, first, check your employer's health plans before going to the marketplace to shop for private health insurance. Always compare all plans options available to you in order to choose the plan that offers a premium that is affordable to you and your family. But also keep your needs and the needs of your family in mind when choosing a health insurance plan. At the end of the day, it would be better to sign up for a high deductible health plan rather than losing coverage on a plan you cannot afford. Think about it. It is better to have some of your medical costs covered rather than running the risk of receiving a full price medical bill. With this in mind, let's move to the next question you should ask yourself the wish question the wish question consists of finding plans that have local in-network doctors and the plans that have the most providers options medical costs are usually lower when you see the in-network doctors instead of the out-of-network doctors because of the discount that in-network providers offer to members of a given insurance plan Hence, if you have healthcare providers you would like to maintain, make sure that they are in network for the plan you are considering taking. But if you have no preferred doctors yet, make sure to get the plan with a large network so that you have options when the time comes for you to choose your providers. Once you find a particular doctor you would like to see, always make sure to ask if he or she accepts the insurance plan you have or are contemplating getting. In the United States, there are three common categories of health insurance plans. The point of service, also known as the POS for short, 
the health maintenance organization also known as hmo for short and the preferred provider organization also known as ppo for short let's briefly discuss each of these categories the point of service plan or pos plan is a plan that enables you to see any doctor or specialist you choose without the need for a referral with this plan the insurance company pays a set portion of your medical bills and you pay the rest the good thing about this plan is the fact that you have no restriction on the providers to use. Hence, you can choose to get your medical care wherever you like with no referral or prior approval. But the inconvenience of this plan is the fact that the insurance companies shift more costs to you using higher premiums and high deductibles, making this plan more expensive to you compared to the HMO and the PPO plans. Sometimes you might be expected to pay for your medical services upfront and then submit a claim to the insurance company for reimbursement. Hence, no guarantee of getting your money back. The Health Maintenance Organization Plan, also known as HMO Plan, is an association of healthcare professionals and medical facilities that offers a fixed package of healthcare services for a fixed price. Each patient within an HMO plan is assigned a primary care physician or allowed to choose one within the health maintenance organization. The primary care physician is often referred to as a gatekeeper because he or she acts like the person in charge of the patient's treatment. The good thing about the HMO is the fact that your premium and out-of-pocket maximum are generally low making HMO plans more affordable compared to POS and PPO plans. Moreover, claims are not usually necessary with HMOs like they might be with the POS plan. However, the inconvenience of HMOs lies in the fact that HMO plans don't cover services provided by healthcare professionals outside the HMO network except in case of emergency. This means that you do not have the privilege to see any other healthcare professionals out of the HMO network unless your gatekeeper, also known as your primary care physician, determines that the specialist is necessary. Hence, you will always need a referral from your primary care physician to see other healthcare professionals if necessary. The preferred provider organization plan, also known as the PPO plan, has the managed care aspect of the HMO plan, but it also gives the ability of going to a healthcare professional outside of the network when you deem it necessary. With a PPO plan, you do not need to choose a primary care physician, nor do you need a referral from your primary care physician to see other healthcare professionals as you would with an HMO plan. Although the PPO plan gives you free access to healthcare professionals out of the network, you will still be encouraged to see providers in your network because healthcare services cost more when you receive them out of the PPO network. Hence, you will end up spending more money out of pocket when you see out of network providers than staying within the PPO network. But if the flexibility to see any healthcare provider you want and whenever you want is important to you, then the PPO plan might be a good choice for you. Keep in mind though, with a PPO plan, your premium will be higher. Plus, it can be challenging to predict your out-of-pocket costs, especially when you go out of network. To put everything in perspective, I will take an example of an HMO plan and a PPO plan offered by an employer. The HMO plan is the column highlighted in yellow, whereas the PPO plan consists of all three columns, the HMO network and the PPO networks. You can see that a person with the HMO plan will pay the lowest deductible and out-of-pocket maximum compared to someone with the PPO plan. In this very example, if you were to insure just yourself and as individual, you will need to meet a deductible of $650 before the insurance kicks in and you will need to pay a maximum of $3,100 out of pocket before the insurance plans can cover you fully at 100%. However, if you choose a PPO network, you could still have the option of meeting the lower deductible 
and out-of-pocket maximum of the HMO plan if you choose to see the providers in that network since the PPO plan includes the HMO providers. Or you could choose to use the PPO in-network providers, in which case your deductible and out-of-pocket maximum will double to 1200 and 6200 respectively. Or you could pay the higher cost of 4600 and 15000 on deductible and out-of-pocket maximum respectively if you decide to go out of the PPO network. This is the reason why those with PPO plans are encouraged to save more money by seeing providers in network and only see out of network providers only when necessary. Now, let's see how much you would pay as premiums under these plans. As for premiums, obviously HMO plans are cheaper compared to PPO plans due to the flexibility and a larger network that PPO plans have that HMOs lack. For example, as a full-time employee seeking insurance as an individual, you will pay $71 per paycheck with an HMO plan compared to $100 per paycheck with a PPO plan. Keep in mind that if you choose a PPO plan, you will pay the same premium per paycheck regardless of the network you choose to use. So why would someone with a PPO plan will want to use the HMO providers when he or she is paying more in premiums compared to someone with the HMO plan? The answer lies in the cost of services with the HMO plan compared to the PPO plan. Though you pay a higher premium with PPO, you still want to minimize your out-of-pocket costs by going to HMO providers, especially if these providers can address your medical needs. In case the HMO providers cannot address your medical needs, then you can use the flexibility and providers of the PPO plan available to you. This is something the person with the HMO plan cannot do. Reason why you pay a higher premium with the PPO plan so that you can use both networks if you choose to. Now let's talk about how services are covered in these networks. Coming back to the plan offered by this employer, you can see that when it comes to medical services, it is cheaper to see a provider in the HMO network. Let's look at the physician services for example. After you meet your annual deductible, the HMO plan will cover you fully after you pay a small copy for treatment in your physician's office. Whereas, if you had a PPO plan and that you saw an in-network physician, the insurance plan will cover only 65% of the cost after the deductible is met. The why question is the easiest part of the process of selecting an insurance plan because you've already done all the work of finding the marketplace, taking a closer look into your medical needs, analyzing the insurance plans presented to you and comparing them to see which will make the most sense to you and your family. At this point, the why question consists of looking into your medical needs, your preferred provider, and your budget to determine which plan will be best for you and your family. Basically, you're answering why the plan you are about to choose makes the most sense to you and your family. Teasers. In order to better explain the process of choosing the right insurance plan for you and your family, I use examples of group health insurance offered by an employer. Please, this does not mean that all insurance plans provided by employers are the same. Group health plans will differ from employer to employer, just like private plans will differ from marketplace to marketplace and from company to company. The most important thing here is to first of all understand some key terms used in insurance plan. These key terms are the deductible, the copay, the co-insurance, the out-of-pocket maximum, and the network. You should also understand how this term affects your premium. Do not be blinded by terms such as bronze, silver, gold, and platinum used in the marketplace. They are just a way to differentiate between plants. Once you understand the key terms of health insurance plan and how they work, you will be able to read any insurance plans, including dental and vision plans. Don't forget to check out MediShare as an alternative to health insurance if you find your premiums with health insurance plan very costly to you. But before you choose to go with MediShare, make sure you read its guideline. 
I have included the link to MediShare in the description box below. Check it out to read its guidelines and obtain quotes. For those that still do not understand health insurance fully, I suggest that you talk to your human resource representative at work or you talk to a health insurance agent if you wish to take a private plan. Going through an agent won't affect your plan and most agents shouldn't charge you for the services offered to you. If you have come this far, I suggest that you watch this video next or you watch the entire playlist. You choose. If this video has been of any value to you, please like, share, and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. And let me know your thoughts in the comment below. I would love to read from you. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.